Hey guys, welcome to TCR. Don't forget, you can get your very own TCR merch down below in the little shopping shelf. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Sid here. Today, we're gonna talk about letting nature take its course. And I did that, and we're gonna see what happened. Was it good? Was it bad? You make the call. But first, before we get into that, I wanna show you guys some of the stuff that Mike's added to the garden and how it's looking right now. It's looking pretty good. So we're just coming out of kind of the hottest part of the day, I would say. And this week, Mike stopped and got some really nice, just random flowers to add to his garden beds, just for funsies, just to pop in some color, uh, maybe attract some bees. Um, we have a lot of bees that like our lavender in the other garden box. Um, but he just planted some different kinds of daisies. He's got so much squash. The squash is going crazy over here right now. All kinds of, I don't even know what, you know, me guys, plants, not my, not my jam. But um, I do like when he grows stuff. I think that's some kind of broccoli or Brussels sprout or something over there. Not sure. Lots of squash and zucchini that are going crazy. He's added some more little, some of these flowers are not liking the heat right now. We've hit triple digits the last few days, so. Definitely going crazy. But it looks like maybe another little flower coming up. But yeah, lots of kale. I had to cut some of this for uh, salad tonight. He's got lots of cucumbers going on back there. Unfortunately, um, in our best hack on the uh, earwigs, um, we did in this bed um, where he was he had all of his pickling cucumbers back along this side of the fence and unfortunately they didn't make it um, so I don't have any pickling cucumbers and the other cucumbers just don't pickle the same way you don't get that like pickle crutch like you do with the pickling cucumbers it just doesn't turn out quite the same so I might still do some pickles but it won't be like the ones last year were amazing, so I'm still kind of trying to talk them into planting some more of those just because I totally dig them. So we'll see. Although then I got inundated and I was making pickles like every other day. It felt like I was doing, making a batch of pickle brine to like, <laughs> to do more pickles. So we'll see. But uh, everything else in the garden is looking really good. It's really, um, he's producing a lot. The tomatoes are starting to come in. Totally just walked through a spider web. Oh, I just walked through another one. Spiders are actually going crazy right now. But lots of little pops of color in there. I like pops of color. I'm a big fan. I totally have spider web like all over me now. I just totally walked through a big one. But see, it's working. There's a bee. Let's see if I can get close enough. Oh, maybe not. It flew away. But there was a bee on that flower for a minute helping pollinate the garden. We've got all kinds of these little uh, cherry tomatoes here that I love to use in our salads. Um, they're all coming in really, really nicely. So I'll have to spend a little bit of time out here picking some of it because Mike's been really slammed at work. And by the time he gets home and waters, he doesn't have a whole lot of time for picking. All part of the, the gardening gig, which is not my jam. Not my jam. Oh, I got a few more pluots up here. Not very many, but got some. I'll have to get those down later. Those things are so yummy. Ooh, little butterfly. Butterfly! Um, but anyway, so guys, as you know, in spring we were in full, you know, baby mode with the Muscovies. And I just kind of let them do their thing. I did pull the first batch of eggs and incubate them. I had the um, that one Muscovy duck and one of my barred rocks, one of my older girls co-nesting together and uh, they hatched out some babies in fact they hatched out they're still together there's three ducklings and one uh, chicken um, that is the same chicken if you remember from one of the gravel delivery day videos that um, the same chicken that I put in the brooder because it was they were off with the ducklings and I put with the brooder 
and it escaped the brooder and went and sat underneath my rooster in my rooster pen on this side. <laughs> so that was my little escape artist bird and then that was the one that the rooster sat on it <laughs> and like kept it warm all night because it was still when it was a little bit chilly. So hi bee, fly, whatever you are. Just nature doing its thing. Anyway, so um, my turkeys were slowly kind of phasing out doing turkeys, which I have sort of a love-hate relationship with. I hate cleaning turkeys because they're they're a lot bigger, they're harder for me to lift up into the cone. Um, they're, it's more of a two-person job, especially the bigger toms. So we do the heritage breeds, and I've been breeding for the last several years um, midget whites which is a heritage breed that has wonderful, flavorful, darker breast meat. Um, they're shaped very oddly when you butcher them. Uh, you can kind of see what I mean. They're almost, when you butcher them, they're almost more like a duck shape. Um, like if you get a whole duck, they, they kind of have a similar shape. Um, more almost, I would say, closer to that than a, what you would consider a traditional turkey that you would get at the store that's like a white broad-breasted or, or something like that. Um, so, and I've hatched them out no problem for years. Well, last year I didn't have a very good hatch rate. I only hatched out a few. And this year I had pulled the eggs, I incubated them. I was in the process of trading my friend Christy for Neil, um, Neil Diamond, our goat. I was gonna give her uh, five or six midget whites and I was gonna have Neil. Well, I incubated like two different rounds of eggs and nothing, couldn't get one to live, couldn't get any of them to hatch. Just some of them weren't fertile, it was just a mess. And I let her, now I, to tell you, I had this Jenny, okay? And this Jenny has set on a nest every year, every season starting in May. Well, in May, we usually get one more round of rain and her nest inevitably floods because they like to be on the ground when they nest, um, at least mine do. I couldn't get them to take to nesting boxes. We tried it, they just like to be on the ground. So unfortunately, um, every year they would flood out. And every year I was like, hoping that they would hatch them out because I really do like when I'm able to let the moms incubate, let, let them hatch them out. It just, it's easier, it's cheaper. I don't have to worry about turning on the brooder lamp. Um, if I've already got the brooder lamp going for like meat chickens that I've, you know, ordered or something, then yes, I'll go ahead and throw some turkeys in there and whatever else I have going on that, you know, if I wanna hatch out more, more chickens or whatever. So I try not to hatch anything out unless I've already kind of got the brooder set up. I don't want to just turn on the brooder light for one or two birds. It just seems really wasteful. About a month ago, she started sitting on a nest. And I was like, you know what? I'll just let her sit on them. We'll see what happens. And the other day, you can hear my little, my little ducklings over there. Um, the other day, and Neil, I know Neil, so he's got something to say to me. So the other day, I came out here and I was like, what is that in the turkey pen? And there were turkey poults, all of them white midgets, which is funny because I keep them, um, I keep them with the bronze and I also had a Naranga set in here for a little while, but I actually sold her um, because I wasn't gonna be breeding her. I'm gonna try not to freak her out. She's a little territorial with them. Oh, it looks like you guys drank all your little baby water too. I'll have to get some more baby water. Okay, calm down. We got some. I know, it's okay. So she's got three little turkey poults. And if you've never seen a turkey poult, by the way, a turkey poult is what you call a baby turkey, guys, because you know how I feel about using the right terms for things. They look like baby ostriches, and they are the cutest freaking things. And that's mama right there. She's doing her call. Yes, you're doing your call for your babies. I know. I know. But they are the cutest. I'm gonna snag this one so you guys can see up close just how cute they are. If it'll let me without freaking out. They have blue eyes because they're midgets. A lot of the midgets have blue eyes and they have their little nub on their forehead for, for their snood. 
and they are just, they look like little baby ostriches. They are the sweetest. Now they don't, they're not very bright. Oh, see, not very bright. But they are the sweetest and they are so cute. I don't know if you guys can see how blue their eyes are, but they are so cute. I just adore them. And so I was happy to have little turkey poults again because it's been a little while since we had turkey poults. Oh, you're so cute. They're not happy. Oh, oh my God, I'm good at catching birds in the air. But I hope you guys can see the blue in their eyes. They just, I love birds that have different colored eyes and it's just so, so cool. And midgets having the blue eyes is just kind of fun. So, okay, I'm gonna set you down. I know you're mad. Go ahead. But this is her first time after all these years of successfully hatching out a clutch. I was super excited. Those were total bonus birds. Just by letting nature take its course, um, you know, kind of, kind of nice to get these three little bonus poults. And I'm just gonna let her raise them and whatever, que sera, sera. Whatever happens, happens with those babies. Um, they all, that's great because I didn't, I didn't purchase turkeys this year. We still were under shipping restriction due to the whole Newcastle issue, um, which has now been lifted as of June. Um, so, but it was too late in the season. I was gonna try to get midgets for breeding. And by then Mike and I had discussed it and we decided we're gonna phase out doing turkeys cause we always sell a ton of turkeys at Thanksgiving. And I sell poults when I have extras, um, outside of my orders, um, from what I've bred of heritage breeds. Um, but I was gonna get new breeding stocks since mine's getting kind of old, which is why I haven't had good hatch rates. Um, but letting nature take its course, she was able to hatch out a few and um, just gonna kind of let those, those babies do their thing. So we will have some extra birds to do this Thanksgiving, but I think we are going to be butchering all of those turkeys and um, being kind of done with them this year. So we'll see. Um, Mike's really wanting to phase into doing, well, Mike and myself are wanting to phase into doing quail and um, and to be doing rabbits. So I'm just waiting for him to build me the structures. That's the next project. But I also wanted to show you guys while we're out here, um, a couple weeks ago when we got the loads of dirt in and Mike took my truck for the first time and got it all nice and dirty for me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, he planted some clover and some hairy vetch in here. So we're letting this grow up and it's doing really well. It's only been, what, two, two and a half weeks um, since he planted and it's popping up really nicely. Uh, we did have some crows try to get in there, um, but these guys, we've kept it penned up. So once it grows up tall enough, we'll let the birds and the goats and everybody in there to, to eat and then we'll plant it again and just keep kind of doing that process for a little while and see how it goes but so far so good yeah so that's what happens when you let nature take its course those babies um they're thriving in there with mama they're eating and drinking which turkeys you have to really nag them to get them to eat and drink when they're babies um i always do them with chickens because they just are that dumb uh, they forget they don't or not even forget they just they're like I don't know I'm something what am I oh you're thirsty you're gonna die and they don't even stop to think that like that's what the problem is so <laughs> luckily mom's been able to get them to eat and drink and there's been apparently no problems with that because it's been long enough now that if they were not eating and drinking uh, they would be dead um, and obviously I'm not out there checking on them and their food and water is in there with all the other birds so it's not like I can really monitor if they're eating and drinking it's it was basically like a well let's see what happens if they live or die but so far they're thriving and now it's been what five days since the first one hatched no six days since the first one hatched so they would all be dead by now if, if they weren't um if they weren't eating and drinking so that's a good sign they can be taught but apparently only by their mama um, that's why I always hatch turkeys with chickens because otherwise they commit suicide. They like go on a hunger strike and that's it. So I know geeseys, I hear you. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get the notifications and go get yourself some TCR merchandise down below. With, I just realized there's something on my lens. Uh, it's okay. I'm just grabbing the water. Everybody calm down. I'm not taking your eggs. I'm not taking your eggs. Calm. Everybody calm. Everybody calm down. I'm just gonna fill your water, babies. Okay. Lord have mercy.